Mr. President, first I want to thank you very much to receive me for an interview. Mr. President, did you give an order to strike Han Shekhun with chemical weapon last Tuesday? Actually, uh, no one has investigated what happened that day in Khan uh, Shekhun till that moment. Uh, as you know, Khan Shekhun is under the control of uh, Al-Nusra Front, which is a branch of Al-Qaeda. So the only information the world uh, have had till this moment is uh, by, uh, published by Al-Qaeda branch. Uh, no one has any other information. We don't know if the whole pictures uh, or video that we've been seeing are true or fabricated. That's why we asked for uh, investigation to what happened in Khan Shekhun. This is for a second. Al-Qaeda sources say that the attack happened at 6, 6.30 in the morning, while the Syrian attack in the same area was at an, uh, around noon, between 11.30 to 12. So it's, uh, they're talking about two different uh, stories or uh, event. So there was no order to uh, make any attack. We don't have any chemical weapons. We gave up our arsenals a few years ago. Even if we have them, we wouldn't use them. And we had never used our uh, chemical uh, arsenal uh, in our history. So what happened this day? As I said, the only source is Al-Qaeda. We cannot uh, take it seriously. But our impression that the West, mainly the United States, is hand in glove with the terrorists. They fabricated the whole story in order to have a pretext for the attack. It wasn't attack because of what happened in Khan Shekhun. It's one event, it's a stage one, the play that we saw on the social networking and on TVs, uh, the propaganda, and the stage two is the military uh, attack. That's what we believe is happening because it's only a few, uh, few days two days, 48 hours, between uh, the play and the attacks, and no investigations, uh, no uh, concrete evidence about everything, anything. The only thing were allegations and propaganda and then strike. So who, according to you, is responsible about this alleged uh, chemical attack? The allegation itself by Al-Qaeda, Al-Nusra Front, so we don't have to investigate who. They announced it. It's under their control, no one else. Uh, about the attack, as I said, it's not clear whether it happened or not. Because how can you verify a video? You have a lot of fake videos now. And you have the proof that those videos were fake, like the white helmets, for example. They are Al-Qaeda, they are Al-Nusra Front, who shaved their beard, wore white hats, and appeared as a humanitarian uh, heroes, which is not the case. The same people were killing Syrian soldiers, and you have the proof on, on the internet uh, anyway. So the same thing for that chemical attack. We don't know whether those dead children were they killed in Khan Shekhun, were they dead at all? Uh, uh, who committed the attack if there was attack? What the material? You have no information at all. Nothing at all. No one investigated. So you think it's a fabrication? Uh, definitely. A hundred percent for us it's fabrication. We don't have arsenal. We're not going to use it. And you have many indications if you don't have proof because no one has concrete ev uh, information or evidences. But you have indications. For example, uh, less than two weeks, around ten days before that attack, uh, the terrorists were advancing in many fronts, including the suburbs of Damascus and Hama, which is not far from Khan Shekhun. Uh, let's suppose we have this arsenal, and let's suppose that we have the will to use it. Why didn't we use it when we were retreating and the terrorists were advancing? Actually, the timing of that attack, or alleged attack, was when the Syrian army was advancing very fast, and actually, the terrorists were collapsing. So, why to use it if you have it and if you have the will? Why to use it at that timing, not when you are in a difficult situation, logically. This is first. Second, if you want to use it, if you have it and if you want to use it, again, this is, if we suppose, uh, why to use it against civilians, not to use it against the terrorists that we are fighting? Uh, third, uh, in that area, we don't have army, we don't have battles, uh, we don't have any, 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 let's say, object in Khan Shekhun, and it's not strategic area. Why to attack it? 
Well, what, what the reason? Militarily, I'm talking about military from, from a military point of view. Of course, the foundation for us morally, we wouldn't do it if we have it. We wouldn't have the will because morally this is not acceptable. We, we, we won't have this, uh, the support of the public. So every indication is against the whole story. So we can say that this play that they staged doesn't hold together. The story is not convincing by any means. With the US airstrike, Trump seems to have changed his position on you and CIA drastically. You have the feeling that you lost what you call, have called a potential partner. I said if it was conditional. Yeah. <laughs> if they are serious in fighting terrorists, we're going to be partner. And I said not only United States, whoever wants to fight the terrorists, we are partner. This is uh, basic, uh, basic for us, basic principle, let's say. Uh, actually, what has been proven recently, as I said earlier, that they are handing gloves, handing gloves with those terrorists. The United States and the West, they are not serious in fighting the terrorists. And yesterday, some of their statements were defending ISIS. They were saying that ISIS doesn't have chemical weapons. They are defending ISIS against the Syrian government and the Syrian army. Uh, so, actually, you cannot talk about partnership between us who work against the terrorists and who fight the terrorism and the others who are supporting explicitly the terrorists. So, can we say that uh, the US tried to change your opinion on uh, Trump? Uh, anyway, uh, I was very cautious in saying any opinion regarding him before, uh, or before he became president and after. I always say, let's see what uh, what he's going to what's he what he's going to do? Uh, we wouldn't comment on uh, statements. Uh, so actually, this is the first proof that it's not about the president in the United States. It's about the regime, and the deep state or the deep regime in the United States is still the same. It doesn't change. Uh, the president is only one of the performers on their theater. He's not. A, if he wants to be a leader, he cannot because. As some say, he wanted to be a leader, Trump wanted to be a leader, but every president there, if he wants to be a real leader, he later is going to eat his words, swallow his pride, if he has pride at all, and make 180 degree U-turn, otherwise he will pay the price politically. But do you think that it will be a, another attack? As long as the United States being governed by this complex of military industrial complex and uh, uh, the financial uh, uh, companies, uh, banks, uh, and this uh, uh, what called deep regime and uh, work for the vested interests of those uh, groups, of course, it could happen anytime, anywhere, not only in Syria. And your army or the Russian will, would retaliate? Uh, if it's happened again? Yeah. Actually, if we want to talk about retaliation, we are talking about missiles coming from uh, hundreds uh, of miles, which is out of uh, our reach. But actually, the real war in Syria is not about those missiles. It's about supporting the terrorists. This is the most dangerous part of this war. And our response is going to be what we started from the very first day, is uh, smashing the terrorists everywhere in Syria. When we get rid of the terrorists, we wouldn't worry about anything else that time. So this is our response. It's a response, not reaction. So what you say is means that retaliation by the Syrian army or by the Russian will be very difficult because the boats are very close, very long. Very, For very us, as a small country, uh, yeah, of course it is. Everybody knows that. It's, not, it's out of reach. I mean, they, they can uh, have missiles uh, from another continent. We all know that. They are a great power, we're not a great power. I'm talking about the Russian, this is another issue. Would you accept the finding of an OPCW investigation? Since the very first time when we had, in 2013, I think the first attacks by the terrorists on the Syrian army by chemical uh, missile that time, we asked for investigation. We were the ones who asked for investigations. Every time there was chemical attacks or allegations, about chemical attacks. We asked, and this time we are discussing with the Russians yesterday, uh, during these, uh, few, uh, the last few days after the strike, that we are going to work with them on uh, international investigations. But it should be impartial. We can only allow any investigation 
when it's impartial, when we make sure that the unbiased country will participate in this uh, delegation uh, in order to make sure that they won't use it for politicized purposes. And if they accuse the government, would you step down? If, if they accuse or if they prove? <laughs> <laughs> There's a big difference. No, they, they, are, they are already accusing the government. Uh, mm. And if you, mean, if you mean by them the West, no, we don't care about the West. Okay. If you mean the chemical uh, uh, agency, uh, if they can prove that there's attack, we have to investigate who gave the order to that attack. But 100% as Syrian army we don't have, and we, we cannot, even if we want, we cannot. We don't have the, the means to uh, commit such attack and we don't have the will. So you mean that you don't have chemical weapon? No, no, definitely. Uh, a few years ago, in 2013, we gave up all our arsenal. And the, uh, the chemical uh, agency announced that Syria is free of any chemical materials. Because the Pentagon said that there are uh, chemical weapons in the air base, you deny. They attacked that air base and they destroyed the depots of different materials. And there was no sarin gas. How? If they said that we launched the sarin attack from that air base, what yeah. happened to the sarin when they attacked the depots? Did we hear about any sarin? Our chief of staff was there a few hours later. How could he go there if there was sarin gas? How could you only have six martyrs if you have hundreds of soldiers and officers working there, but there was sarin and they didn't die? It's the same fabricated videos that we've been seeing about Khan Sheikhoun when the rescuers try to rescue the victims or the supposedly yeah. uh, dead people or yeah. uh, inf inflicted people uh, but actually they weren't wearing any masks or any gloves. How? Where the sarin? This should be affected right away. So this is all uh, allegation. That's, I mean this attack and these allegations is another proof that it was fabricated and there was no sarin anywhere. If you say that you didn't give any order, it is possible that the chemical attack could have been carried out by rogue or fringe element from the army? Even if you have rogue uh, element, the army doesn't have chemical material. This is first. Second, uh, the rogue army cannot uh, send airplane uh, at their will. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever they want. It's airplane. It's not small car to take it from place to place or ma small machine gun to use it. <laughs> you, can, you can talk about somebody who's been using his uh, pistol on his behalf the way he wants and break the rope. That could happen anywhere in the world, yeah. but not the uh, airplane. This is second. Third, the Syrian army is a regular army. It's not a militia. It's a regular army. It has hierarchy. It has very clear way of orders, so you can, it, this kind of uh, rough uh, personnel try to do something against the will of the leadership of the army never happened during the last six years of uh, the war in Syria. Did the Russian warn you before the US attack and they were present in the air base? No, they didn't warn because they didn't have the time to warn because the American called them maybe a few minutes before the launching or some says after the launching because it takes uh, time to, to reach uh, the base. Uh, but uh, actually we had indications that there was something is going, uh, that was going mm -hmm. to happen and we took uh, many measures in that regard. The, do you confirm that 20% of your air force has been destroyed in this attack as the Americans said? I don't know what the criteria and what the uh, reference of 20%, what the 100% for them, is it the number of airplanes, is it the quality? Is it the, uh, how to say, the active airplanes and the stored airplanes? I don't know what, what do they mean by, by this. No, actually, uh, what uh, we and the Russians announced about few airplanes being destroyed, most of them are the old ones. Some of them were uh, not active. Anyway, this is the reality. And the proof that we've uh, seen the strike, we haven't stopped attacking terrorists all over Syria. So we didn't feel that we are really affected. Our firepower, our ability to attack the terrorists hasn't been affected uh, by, by this strike. You know, your government said in the beginning that you hit a chemical weapon depot. Is it true? It was a possibility because when you attack 
uh, any target related to the terrorist, you don't know what's in it. You know that this is target. It could be a store, it could be a warehouse, it could be a depot, it could be a camp, it could be a headquarter. You don't know, but you know that the terrorists using this place and you attack it uh, like any other place. And that's what we've been doing uh, since the beginning of the war on daily basis, on hourly basis sometimes. Yeah. And, but you cannot tell what's within this. So that, is, that, that was one of the possibilities that the airstrikes attacked a depot of uh, chemical uh, material, but this is conflicting again with the timing of the announcement. Mm -hmm. Not because only the, the terrorists uh, announced it in the, uh, in the morning, but because their media, their pages on Twitter and on the internet announced the, uh, the attack a few hours before, before the, the, the alleged one, which is uh, four in the morning. Four in the morning allow, uh, announced that they're going to be uh, chemical attack, we have to be ready. How did they know about it? Don't you see that uh, Han Shekhun is a huge setback for you? For the first time in six years, the US attacked your army, and yesterday, after a brief honeymoon, yesterday, Tillerman said that the reign of Assad family is coming to the end. Do you see, don't you think that Han Shekhun is a huge setback for you? There's no reign of Assad family anyway in Syria. <laughs> he's dreaming. Or he's, let's say he's hallucinating. <laughs> so we wouldn't waste uh, our time with his statement. In reality, no, actually during the last six years, the US was directly involved in supporting the terrorists everywhere in Syria, including ISIS, including al-Nusra, including all the other like-minded factions in Syria. This is clear and this is proven uh, in Syria. Uh, well, if you want to talk about the direct attacks, uh, actually only a few months ago, there was more dangerous attack than the recent one, uh, just before Obama left, I think a few weeks before he left. Uh, it was in the Azor, in the eastern part of Syria, when they attacked a very strategic mountain. Uh, it was a Syrian base, a regular Syrian uh, army base. Uh, uh, and uh, that helped ISIS, took over that mountain. and. If the Syrian army wasn't resilient and strong enough to repel ISIS, the city of Deir Zor would have been now in the hands of ISIS, means direct link between Deir Zor and Mosul in Iraq, which would have been a very strategic gain uh, to ISIS. So I actually know the uh, American government was directly involved, but this time, why, why did they attack directly? Because as I said, the terrorists in that area were collapsing. Mm -hmm. So the United States didn't have any other choice to support their proxies, the terrorists, but to directly attack the Syrian army because they sent them all kinds of armament and they didn't work. That's so why. for you it's not a huge setback after the whole No, no, no it was actually part of the context, the same context for six years. Ah, yeah. It took different shapes, but the core of the American policy and the Western policy toward what's happening in Syria it hasn't changed at all. Forget about the statements. Sometimes you have high pitch statements, sometimes you have low pitch statements, but it's the same policy. <laughs> you have gradually pushed most of the rebels into Idlib. Mm. Do you plan to attack it next? Uh, we're going to attack terrorists anywhere in Syria, Idlib or any other place. What the timing, what the priority is, this is a military issue, it should be discussed on the military uh, level. <clears throat> you said before that Raqqa is a priority for your government, but the forces advancing on the city are mostly US-backed Kurds. Aren't you afraid of being excluded from the liberation of Raqqa? No, we support whoever wants to liberate any city from the terrorists. But that doesn't mean to be liberated from terrorists and being occupied by American forces, for example, or by another proxy or another terrorist. So uh, it's not clear who's going to liberate Raqqa. Is it really Syrian forces that's going to hand it over to the Syrian army? Is it going to be in cooperation with the Syrian army? Uh, it's not clear yet. But the, what we hear is only allegations about liberating Raqqa. We've been hearing that for nearly a year now, or less than a year. But nothing happened on the ground. So just, uh, let's say, hypothetical question, because there's nothing concrete on the ground. 
The US and Russia are the co-sponsor of Geneva process. Because of the tension between the two countries, do you think that this process can continue? Look, there's a big difference between the process being active, which could happen any time to reactivate the process, and to be effective. Till this moment, it's not effective. Why? Because the United States is not serious in achieving any political solution. They want to use it as an umbrella for the terrorists, or they want to get in this forum what they didn't get on the ground in the battlefield. Uh, that's why it wasn't effective uh, at all. Now, in the same situation, we don't, we don't see this, this administration uh, serious in that regard, because they still support the same terrorists. So, we can say, yes, it could be reactivated, but we, don't, we cannot say we expect it to be effective or, produ or productive, no. After six years, Mr. President, aren't you tired? Actually, the only thing that could uh, make pressure on you, uh, not the political situation, not the military situation, actually the human situation in Syria. The daily bloodletting, the daily bloodshedding, the suffering uh, and the hardship uh, that inflicted every house in Syria. This is the only painful thing that could make you feel tired, if it's accurate to, to say tired. Well, regardless, if you talk about the war, about the politics, about the relation with the US, no, I don't feel tired at all because we are defending our country and we're not going to get tired at all in that regard. What makes you lose sleep? Again, the suffering of the Syrian people, the, the humanitarian uh, interaction between me uh, and the, every Syrian family, directly or indirectly. This is the only thing that could uh, deprive me from uh, sleep uh, from time uh, to time, but not the Western statements and not the threat of the support of the terrorists. Today, there are people from Fouad Kifraya who will move from their village to, uh, uh, to Damascus or to Aleppo. You, don't af you are not afraid that, uh, in fact, it will be displacement of population and the Syria after the war will not be the same as Syria before. Uh, the displacement in that uh, context is compulsory. We didn't choose it. We wish that everyone could stay in his village, in his city, but uh, those people, like many other civilians in different areas, were surrounded and besieged by the terrorists, and they've been killed on a daily basis, so they had to leave. Uh, but, of course, they're going to go back to their, to their cities, after the liberation. That happened in many other areas where the people are going back to their homes. So it's temporary. Uh, talking about demographic changes uh, is not in the sake or in the interest of the Syrian uh, society when it's permanent. As long as it's temporary, we wouldn't worry about it. Mr. President, I want to thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. It was very interesting. And, uh, not at all. Thank you very much for Thank you. Visit.